Republicans can realistically win 56 Senate seats this November, making it the largest majority since Barack Obama's back in 2008. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what seats the GOP will need to win to achieve this historic victory. I'm going to begin by showing you guys the states that Republicans currently hold seats in. There aren't very many, and that is why they are so favored this year. Republicans currently have senators in Utah, Wyoming, North Dakota, the two seats in Nebraska, as well as Missouri, Indiana, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Texas and Florida. Now, the states I've already filled in as solid red, we all know these states are going to go to the GOP. These are some of the most conservative states in the country. However, in Texas and Florida, we do have two races that will be slightly more competitive. In Texas, Ted Cruz is running for re-election, and he does lead Colin Allred in the polls by around 7%. Now, Allred is not at the level that Beto O'Rourke was back in 2018, when the election in Texas was actually pretty competitive. Now, one other key thing to note is that all the seats up for re-election this November, the last time we had elections in the states for these seats was back in 2018, which was a blue wave year after two years of Donald Trump in office. And so this was a very favorable election for Democrats, where they were able to hold on to seats in Arizona, Nevada, Montana, Ohio, as well as West Virginia. But now that we're in 2024, we have Joe Biden in office, and these states are going to trend significantly to the right, just because typically states do not vote more in favor of the incumbent than they did the first time around. So the 2024 map, just by default, will be skewed more towards the right than what it looked like back in 2018. Now, the race in Texas is probably going to be likely Republican. That's at least what it's looking like based on the latest polls. In Florida, this is a race where we have Rick Scott running for re-election. He defeated Bill Nelson, who is the incumbent Democrat, in a, the closest election of the 2018 cycle. Scott won by just 0.12%, and this was a pretty impressive victory that helped Republicans maintain a solid majority. This was a gain for the GOP six years ago, and now that Scott is the incumbent himself, it is very unlikely he's going to lose his re-election. And if you look at the Senate election in 2022, Marco Rubio won by 16%. It is very likely that Scott actually wins by a solid margin, but just to be a little bit more conservative here, I'm going to place Florida into the likely Republican column for now, but just by default, Republicans are going to win 49 seats. They are not going to lose any of the seats that they currently hold. Before we continue, only 5% of you guys are subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe for regular political content leading up to the 2024 election. I'm now going to move on to filling in some of these solid Democratic states, just so that we have a better idea of how the map is going to look like with just the competitive states left. So Democrats are going to win in Washington and California. These are two pretty blue states, as well as in Hawaii and New Mexico. Martin Heinrich is the Democrat running in New Mexico, and the Senate map is going to be quite a bit different from the presidential map. Joe Biden and Donald Trump are pretty competitive in the state of New Mexico, but on the Senate level with a popular Democratic incumbent, the race is not going to be anywhere near as close. Now, we also have Democrats on track to winning in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, as well as New Jersey and Delaware. These races are not going to be too competitive. And in Vermont and Maine, we have two independents that caucus with Democrats, Bernie Sanders and Angus King. They are going to win their re-elections as well. In Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar is a popular incumbent, so she is going to win her re-election by a solid margin, as she has done in the last three races. And in New York, Kirsten Gillibrand will be running for re-election. So this is the map that we are left with 10 states. Republicans need to win seven of them if they want to win 56 Senate seats. And this is a realistic scenario, especially if you look at how many of these states are trending. And of course, one of them is actually West Virginia, a state that Donald Trump won by 40% in 2016. And so we will start with West Virginia. This is the most obvious flip for Republicans. We no longer have Joe Manchin running for re-election. He was the incumbent Democrat. And with him no longer running again, 
this state is going to go red. Manchin was able to avoid losing re-election in 2018. It was still a pretty close race. Patrick Morrissey lost by just 3.2%. But this time, we have the best possible Republican nominee, Jim Justice, who is the current and very popular governor of West Virginia. Even when Manchin was in the race, Justice was still going to win by a double-digit margin. Joe Manchin had no chance. But now, with Democrats going to nominate a no-name candidate, Jim Justice is going to destroy whoever that candidate is going to be this November. So West Virginia is going to be solid red. And so this means that basically we had 49 seats. That was what I said the default, the floor for Republicans was. But really, it's going to be 50 because West Virginia is going to be more solid for the GOP than many of these remaining races. On the presidential level, it is the second most conservative state in the country. Now, the next state that Republicans can pick up is actually not talked about too much. It is the seat currently held by Debbie Stabenow up in Michigan. Stabenow has been serving Michigan since 2000. However, she has decided that she is not going to run for re-election. And so in her place, Democrats are going to nominate Alyssa Slotkin, who is a current U.S. representative, while Republicans are are on track to nominate Mike Rogers, who was a former representative that served in Michigan for 14 years. So if we look at the latest polling for this race, Slotkin leads by just 1%. The latest poll shows a tie in this election. And in Michigan, we had a surprisingly close Senate election back in 2020, where Gary Peters, who was the incumbent, only won by 1.7%, even though he was expected to win by nearly 7 points. So these Senate elections in Michigan can definitely get competitive, and now that Democrats don't even have an incumbent, Republicans could realistically flip this seat and win it by a lean margin. Another race in which Democrats don't have an incumbent in, which makes them more vulnerable, is Arizona. Kirsten Sinema, who won election as a Democrat in 2018, since converted to being an independent, and then she lost so much support that she basically had no viable path to re-election and dropped out. So we now do have a two-way race between Ruben Gallego and Kerry Lake. Now, it's very early on, and I do not believe that Kerry Lake is the best nominee for Republicans. I think that someone much more to the center would do better in this election. But in a best-case scenario for Republicans, which is basically what this is, Kerry Lake is still going to win. She only lost the gubernatorial election in 2022 to Katie Hobbs by less than one percentage point. So Kerry Lake is still a relatively viable candidate in Arizona. Even if the polling doesn't look too great right now, this race is going to be one of the most competitive. There's no doubt about that. The next three races we're going to look at, we have three Democratic incumbents running for re-election all very vulnerable. The first one is John Tester up in Montana. He is currently running for his fourth term and leads Tim Sheehy by 5.5 percentage points. The race is still very early. Sheehy isn't even officially the nominee yet. There's still a primary race going on. And as this race gets more and more competitive leading up until November, we will see Tim Sheehy's numbers rise against Tester's. In 2020, Democrats didn't even come close to winning the Senate election, even though they had a pretty popular former governor running. So Montana is a pretty red state. And by all accounts, John Tester should lose his re-election, considering he only won it by a three-point margin in a blue wave year back in 2018. So Montana is a viable state for Republicans as well. And so is the state of Ohio, where Sherrod Brown is running for re-election. He is also a longtime incumbent and leads Moreno by 5%. He is now officially the Republican nominee. The race is also going to get closer here, as we see in some of the newest polls here. It is going to be very competitive. A five-point margin in Ohio doesn't really mean too much because that was the margin that Hillary Clinton was supposed to win the Buckeye State by in 2016, and she got absolutely blown out by Donald Trump. Trump is very effective in the Midwest. He flipped Iowa, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin in 2016. If there's any region where Trump can help Republicans, it is the Midwest. And that is why Ohio is going to be so competitive. And finally, out west in Nevada, Jackie Rosen is running for her re-election. 
She won in 2018, defeating incumbent Dean Heller, who was a Republican. So she is a pretty strong candidate herself. But in the best case scenario for Republicans, she would lose her reelection. She's currently only ahead by 4% against Sam Brown. In 2022, we saw a very close election with Catherine Cortez Masto only winning re-election by 0.78%. This was the closest race of the year, and Adam Laxalt, who is the Republican nominee, is a worse choice than Sam Brown, who is going to be on the ballot this year. So Republicans do have a viable path to flipping the silver seat as well, and this puts them up at 55 seats. We're now left with just four states. I'm going to get Virginia out of the way. It's definitely a solid for Democrats still. It could have been close, and that's why I left it here. Glenn Youngkin is the incumbent Republican governor. He would have given Kane a run for his money if he ran, but he decided not to jump into the race. And so Tim Kane is probably going to come out with around a 12-point victory, and that will make Virginia solid blue. But Republicans definitely could have had a good chance if they ran their best possible nominee. In Wisconsin, this state could go down to the wire. Tammy Baldwin is running for re-election, but she only leads by 3% in the most recent poll. In a best-case scenario for Republicans, this could be a one-point race. And finally, in Pennsylvania, this is the last seat I'm going to give to Democrats on this map. Bob Casey is running for re-election. He's been in the Senate since 1996 and he leads by 8% in the latest polling against David McCormick. McCormick is a good candidate, though. He could definitely make this race close. If he was the nominee in 2022, which he ran for, but he lost to Mehmet Oz, if Oz was not the nominee in 2022, Republicans probably could have beaten John Fetterman. But for right now, we have David McCormick on the ballot in 2024 instead of 2022, which isn't really the best for Republicans because McCormick, would have definitely been the better nominee last time around, but this time he's running against Bob Casey, who is also a better candidate from the Democrats. So in a best-case scenario, this state could be lean Democrat, but Republicans are probably not too viable, at least as of right now. And finally, in Maryland, this is the state that's going to give Republicans their 56th seat. We do not have a Democrat running for re-election here, so Larry Hogan, the former governor, the very popular former governor who was governor up until 2023, has jumped into the race, and he leads by 4.4% on average against David Trone, who is the leading Democrat. And so if Republicans can somehow win in Maryland, they can realistically get up to 56 seats. This is obviously not the most likely scenario, but it is disturbingly possible more than Democrats would want. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content like this up until the election in November.